Hi folks, Paul here and today I just thought I would share with you the birch polypore. As you can see I'm sat next to a birch tree here and on it we've got this fungus growing and this is commonly known as a birch polypore or um, a razor bracket or a birch bracket and um, what I want to share with you today was just how we can use this as a medicinal mushroom, how it can help us when we cut ourselves. Um, it's antiviral, antibacterial and it's styptic as well so it'll stop bleeding. And um, I'm sure many of us have heard the stories about being able to create a plaster from this fungus. So I figured I would share that today because it's not something you see done very often. And it's an important skill to, uh, to know, to be able to replicate in the woods again and again. Um, but it's not something you see practiced very often because the only time we really think of it is when we actually cut ourselves. And at that point it's probably a bit too late to be doing um, learning. So I figured I would share that with you guys just now. And... Um, just put the information out there so that it's there and you can go and practice it and you can learn it. The reason I'm sharing this now is because these bracket funguses, these mushrooms are growing just now and it's when they're growing that we want to make use of the uh, of the fungus. When they're old and dry we can't really use them in the same way and that will make more sense in a second once I uh, bring you guys in closer and show you how it is we prepare this mushroom to make a plaster. Okay, so before we get into processing the fungus, I thought I would just give you guys a closer look at it growing um, on a tree in its natural environment. And uh, as you can see, it grows on birch, birch polypore as the name suggests, and it grows on dead birch. So you can see this limb here is very dead, and this is where you're going to find it growing. And quite often you'll find six or seven of these growing on one, one trunk or one piece of dead wood. So they're very, very common, and you can, um, you can identify them fairly easily as well, because there's only... Um, one other mushroom, the uh, horsehoof fungus or Fomus fomentarius, that could be mistaken as being similar. Either way, both uh, mushrooms are entirely safe to use and both very, very good mushrooms to use as well, very useful. Um, but as you can see, the, uh, the birch polypore here is very, very light tan brown and it's kind of got like a white around the edge here. You might often see these cracks on it as well where the skin is growing out. And quite often it'll be growing from like a little nodule like this in the tree and it grows down and out. Another way of telling if this mushroom is fresh or not is to look underneath it. And these, um, these mushrooms have spore tubes and the spore tubes on these are like a brilliant white colour. And um, if you feel it and it's moist then that will let you know that it's a fresh, fresh specimen as well. And um, when these die they tend to go very very foamy and they'll get eaten by bugs quite rapidly as well. And they, um, they they smell quite bad as well, actually, as it happens. So, um, for for our purposes, we want to find them when they're nice and fresh like this. And um, ideally, we want to find one a bit bigger. I've got one here. It's a bit bigger. I've collected, so we'll use that one and leave this one where it is to grow some more. Um, but that's a bit about the identification. Again, there isn't really much you can confuse it with, and uh, it'll probably be one of the first mushrooms or funguses you'll learn about as you're uh, as you're kind of venturing into bushcraft if you're just starting out so all that being said let's take our specimen we've collected over to a, a log and process it and make a plaster and show you how that works okay folks so we've collected our um, fungus here and um, as you can see this one's a bit bigger now the reason the size is important is because depending on the size of the fungus that's going to dictate the size of the plaster you're going to be able to produce from the fungus now the, um, the reason this matters is because if you have a cut on your finger, you can select a slightly smaller fungus, they're going to be easier to find. If you've got a cut on your arm, a big cut on your arm, then you're going to want a, a bigger fungus. Now these ones actually are about kind of average size, but they'll grow to about four times this size. I've seen them get really, really big. Um, but this is about perfect for just your, you know, your little cuts and stuff like that. Now, when you first hear about this, this little trick, there's often a bit of a debate about whether you use the top of the fungus or you use the, the bottom. Now, I've sat here for a wee while and I've had a play, as you can see, I've marked into it and I've tried and tested this in the past as well. I've tried it with loads of different, you know, different specimens of the same sort of variety and I've always had the same result. For me, the only way you can make this work is by using the underside of the fungus. Essentially what we're doing is we're cutting these spore tubes and we're pulling a strip of spore tubes off. So, the mushroom's essentially got three layers. You've got the, the outer skin protecting it You've got the fruit body on the inside, and then on the underside, you've got the um, spore tubes, which is where it releases spores to reproduce and, you know, 
um, spread out. And it's the spore tubes we're going to cut our strip into and we're going to be able to pull off. So I've, again, you'll hear people say you can use the top. I would disagree with that, but go out and try it for yourself and see how you get on. Um, the other thing we're going to need to make our plaster is some sort of cordage. So we're going to cut this strip off, but we're also going to need to secure it onto our cut, whatever our cut might be, whether it be on your hand, your arm, your leg, or wherever. You're going to need something to, to kind of, again, attach it. So, as you can see behind me here, just so happens, we've got birch on this side, and we have pine on this side. Now, birch and pine are like peas and carrots. You'll always find them next to each other. And um, we can get the fungus from the birch, and we can get roots from the pine. Now the roots make really really good little cordage and you can dig it up and use it out of the ground straight away. Now obviously we're talking about um, putting a plaster on a cut here and the whole idea of that is to stop the cut from becoming infected, to stem bleeding and um, it's important that you clean your roots off properly before you go applying them to your, your cut because obviously they're coming up at the ground, they're covered in dirt and you'd be wasting your time putting a plaster on and then wrapping it in mud so that's something to bear in mind. Um, as you can see, I've not really processed this root in any way. I'm trying to do this in as, as quick a way as possible to make it as authentic as possible. You know, when you've got a cut in your hand and you're pouring blood everywhere, you're not going to be in a hurry to kind of split these down and make nice cordage and all the rest of it. You're going to be cutting a strip out of the fungus, digging up a root and just wrapping it on and you're going to be good to go. So all this being said, let's talk about actually cutting the strip out of the fungus. So you can see I've done one already here. It comes out really nice cuts really really easy and um, it's nice having a log like this you can cut on but because this fungus is nice and soft it's actually very safe to cut just on the ground on your leg you know on your knee not on the inside of your leg but on your knee because you've got this back stuff of the fungus itself so I would always advise kind of having a stump or doing it on the ground um, but very very safe to process and again you might be wondering why I'm suggesting this and why it's safe and why that matters you've just cut yourself you're going to be panicking, you're going to have adrenaline rushing through your body. You don't want to have to like be fiddly with something. You don't want to have to kind of do delicate knife work. You want to be able to just kind of, you know, put your knife in and not worry about it. And having this big fruit body acts as like a, almost like a glove to your other hand. You know, you're, you're protecting yourself. So all we're going to do is just cut a long strip. So much like I've done here. Again, doesn't really take much at all to do this especially when the fungus is nice and fresh. You'll know when you've gone through it because you'll kind of, it's tough on the outside and then when you get through to the fruiting body, it becomes very, very easy to cut. So I've cut two lines across the top here and now all I have to do is just match it down the way. Again, very, very nice to cut, very safe to cut. It's basically just like cutting a sponge. Okay, so you can see I've cut the strip there. And now I'm going to do is take my knife and just pry underneath it. Now you might tear the end a little, but that's okay. And you can see there, what I've done is just pry it up. Okay, so I've separated the spore tubes from the actual fruit of the fungus. And now all I have to do, grab hold, and off it comes. Again, you can see there, the fruit body is left untouched, and all we've taken off is these spore tubes. And if you look at this up at the sky, you guys won't be able to see it unfortunately, but when you look at this up at the sky, you can see all the, uh, all the spore tubes, and it's incredible to see. Um, now this stuff is actually quite like elasticy. It's... Um, quite kind of givey and um, that makes it good for stretching around stuff and really getting a lot of tension on. So I've cut this strip now. If I was in a situation where I needed to put this on and get done with it straight away, I wouldn't be handling it, I wouldn't be trying to like touch it and get it all dirty. It would just be a case of putting it on my cut. So let's say I cut my finger, um, for instance, I'm going to put it on, wrap it around, pull it nice and tight, <coughs> and I'd grab my cordage wrap that round and then just tuck that into itself like so ok 
Okay, now this isn't going to be pretty. This you're talking about using natural materials here, but um, you know it doesn't need to be pretty. It just needs to stop you from bleeding everywhere, essentially. Okay, so you can see I've pulled that tight there. And as I was saying, this is antiseptic. All right, no, sorry, it's styptic. It's antibacterial. It's antiviral. It's got all these amazing properties to it, and um, it's such a useful one to know. So there we have it. I now have a birch polypore plaster on my finger. The birch polypore is nice and soft, it's kind of spongy, it's got a lot of give to it, so I can still move my hands if I need to, and I can carry this fungus and replace it as and when I need to. Um, you know, if you if you catch dirt in this while you're out, you can take it off, wash it out, replace it, and um, cut another plaster and put it on, just as you have done. Now, it's taken me quite a while to explain this and talk through it, I could realistically achieve what I've just done in this video in the space of five minutes. You know, so I could go from cutting myself to digging up a root, cutting the polypore, and having it on my hand in less than five minutes. And when you're out in the woods and you're looking for first aid as a way of keeping yourself safe from infection and stuff, you know, know knowing these little bits and pieces is a very, very useful kind of bit of knowledge to have. It's very, very simple. You can't really go wrong. And um, don't be one of these people that talk about it and never actually do it. Go out and give it a go. Practice it. Get a feel for the fungus. Know what it, you know, what it looks like, how it feels, and um, just develop an understanding of you and the uh, the fungus and the, and the ability. So that's going to do it for me, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this little video. Um, just a useful one. If you ever cut yourself or you know damage yourself, it's nice to know how to fix yourself. So. That's going to do it for me. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and I'll catch you all again soon.